hello again everybody so i am back because i am sharing an insightful message for those of you who may or may not know i did recently start a podcast and the podcast is called no god no truth and overall it is sort of like two different i guess two different um I don't know what I'm looking for, but what it does is I had that platform, obviously, you know, to, to share the word of God and to spread the gospel. And I do uh, Bible readings. It's just strictly Bible readings, you know, not necessarily Bible studies, but just Bible readings um, because I was reminded through a comment that not everyone has a Bible in their home and not everyone grew up, you know, in the church and grew up in, in, in the faith of believing in God. So I do Bible readings and then also the insightful messages, which are to, you know, really get you to have a heart to heart with yourself, you know, for you to kind of have that reality check and determine where you are in your relationship with God and encourage you to uh, to grow closer to him, encourage you to, you know, realize truths about yourself. So. Uh, like I said, that's a, a podcast that I recently started, so I may be a bit amateur at it, so bear with me if y'all do go listen to it, but but yeah, for this message, uh, this insightful message is just for you to ponder and for you to just really evaluate, you know, are you in love with God? And I'll start with Psalm 103 in the verse where it mentions, he does not treat us as our sins deserve. And I'll read that entire passage, you know, so that you get the, so that you get the overall concept of that message from that passage. In Psalm 103, praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins, and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles the lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed he made known his ways to moses his deeds to the people of israel the lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in love he will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve, or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children, with those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, my soul. And again, that was in Psalm 103. And from that, Psalm 103 is, is one of many chapters that expresses God's love for us. And it gives us a reality check that he does not treat us as our sins deserves. So, beloved, the Lord loves us. The love's Lord for us is the purest, most truest, unconditional love that we will ever have. Yet many of us take advantage of his undying love and take for granted his grace and mercy. But why is that? That is a question. It is a loaded question for sure. And the answer will vary among individuals, but the most obvious and truthful answer is that we are not used to experiencing that type of love. 
we can examine it in our relationships with one another, whether it's family, friends, or romantically. Too often, we have to deal with imperfect love, being mistreated by someone who claimed to love us, or betraying someone that we claim to love, and sometimes pushing away those who truly do love us, whether it's intentional or not. But love is something that we all seek to find, but we settle for imperfect love because in this world, real true love is, is rare. And so subconsciously, we treat God the same way. We claim to love God, yet our actions show otherwise. We claim to love God, yet he's the only one working to keep the relationship alive. And beloved, don't continue to mistreat or misuse or take advantage of the one who truly loves us unconditionally. Don't continue to mess up your relationship by going back and forth because you know our Heavenly Father will always be there for you. A healthy loving relationship requires love, honor, and respect from both individuals. So don't mishandle God just because of his undying nature, just because of his unchanging nature. Beloved, when you truly fall in love with someone, you can examine it in, in our human experience. When you truly fall in love with someone, you want to do right by them and you're determined to do everything you possibly can to make it work. So I pray that you fall in love with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Because being in love is an active state of mind, meaning you strive to please them and you strive to make them happy. And you're so in love that you don't want to disappoint. You don't want to sabotage or jeopardize the relationship. So ask yourself, are you truly in love with the Most High? God's love is unique and extraordinary. In Ephesians chapter 3, verses 17 through 19, and I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. So we see in, the, in, we see in Ephesians that God's love surpasses all knowledge. His love is something that you cannot fathom but nonetheless you can experience and you can feel his love. And in Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16, at the end of Psalm 91, we see what the Lord will give in return to those who love him, the intangible, not the tangible. Verse 14, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. And brothers and sisters, that is a love worth experiencing. So instead of spending too much time and energy seeking that kind of love from a human being, beloved, open your heart to receive a love to see to, to receive the love from our Heavenly Father, to receive the love from our Lord Jesus Christ, a love that has already been presented to you, an unconditional and undying love that's already being offered to you. Because we deserve, in all honesty, we do deserve an undying, unconditional love. And we have that, thank the Lord, we have that from the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. For we know in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. In John chapter 14, when Jesus is speaking to his disciples about his departure, in verse 18, he tells them, I will not leave you here as orphans. So we see his love. I will not leave you here as orphans. And then in verse 26, the Father will send the Holy Spirit in my name. So that lets us know that Jesus is concerned for our well-being, that he loves us so much that, okay, although I am leaving, I am sending an advocate in my name to be with you. So, beloved, all you have to do is believe. All you have to do is believe and love Jesus in return. And 
verse 21 of John chapter 14. The one who loves me will be loved by my father and I too will love them and show myself to them. So open your heart to accept a love of that magnitude and open your mind to experience a love that surpasses all knowledge and stop feeling as though you're undeserving or unworthy. Beloved, come as you are. Submit yourself to the Lord. Repent, confess your sins to him and allow him to begin a new good thing in you. And one of the one of the things that I do love about God, so many obviously, but one of the things I do love about God is that he's all about progression. He's all about progression and moving forward with life. Moving forward in your life, getting you to stay ahead. And so back to Psalm 103 in verse 9, it tells us he will not harbor his anger forever. And then in verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And transgressions meaning any act that goes against his word and his commands. So in verse 12, as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. So God doesn't withhold his love. He does not withhold his promises nor his plans from us. It's on us to repent. It's on us to believe and to come to him because he is waiting. He is waiting for, for you, some of us, because we have guilt. We feel shame, but he is waiting for you to forgive yourself so that you can come to him and repent and be made whole. And then going through a few more scriptures. So how do you show your love for God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ? And that answer is as it relates to the word in just a few scriptures. In John 14, verse 15, if you love me, keep my commands. In 1 John chapter 4, verse 20 through 21, whoever claims to love God, yet, yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 9, no one who is born of God will continue to sin because God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. And then in verse 23, and this is his command to believe to believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. And as I said, those are just a few scriptures of how we show our love for God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. But the elements, the elements of it is for us to believe, to love, and be obedient to his commands. And then I'll close with, with um, I guess, a personal a personal scripture that's 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 really been on my heart since I came across it. Uh, it's, it's from the words of Paul in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 17. And before I read it, Paul was like many of us because Paul as well, Paul had a, had a past, you know, and he considered himself the worst of sinners, but he did not allow his past to sabotage the way God used him. He did not allow his past to, to keep him from the good thing God was doing in his life. And so in verse, in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12 through 17, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy, appointed, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. Verse 14, the grace of the Lord was poured out on me abundantly along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners 
of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display. Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example. As an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. And then in verse 17, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And those are from the words of Paul. So, beloved, again, just ask yourself, are you in love? Not do you love? Are you in love? Because being in love causes you to be active. Causes you to, to show it with your actions. Because love is, love is a, an action word. So ask yourself, are you truly in love? Are you in love with God the Father, with our Lord Jesus Christ? And then just have that heart-to-heart -heart with him at that point. Pray and ask him to correct you in your ways. Ask him to, to, to heal you in the areas that you need healing. Ask him to, to, to lead you in the word so that you can have a revelation. Because a revelation is... is, is is deeply is 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 deeply received through understanding so in order for it to just truly resonate with you in order for it to truly seep down into you you have to also have that understanding so just have that conversation with the lord and ask him lord what must i do to to, to show you you know show me the way how can i show my love for you how can i elevate in my faith because that's what it's about. It's about maturing in your faith. The word tells us that to move past the elementary teachings and mature in your faith. So I hope that message helps someone. Again, um, I recently started a podcast and those podcasts are uh, in between where it's just straight Bible readings, you know, it's not Bible studies, but it's just Bible readings because not everyone has a Bible in their home. And it's also for the non-believers, you know, somebody, a non-believer may come across that podcast and, you know, it may draw them to the word. So it's Bible readings. And then it's also messages like this that are uh, uh, insightful messages. And it's just strictly to the word, you know, it's not just only from my thoughts and from my from my viewpoint, you know, it's all just, you know, whatever the message is, then that's where the word comes from. You know, it's, it's back to back with the scripture, with the scripture, with the scripture. So, uh, obviously, it's called No God, No Truth. But I love y'all, and God loves you most. Y'all stay safe and be blessed.